What's up everybody, it's Realistic with Realistic Productions and I'm doing another tutorial for SoundOracle.net and what I'm going to be going over to with today is phase cancellation. This is a really big thing that shows up in a lot of music. Uh, it's been something that's been figured out for several years of how to avoid it and stuff but I'm just going to show you a couple techniques. Uh, one of the big things that people use uh, try to do is if you're recording it uh, live, let's say that you're recording uh, guitars and stereo or you're recording like drums or something, usually people want to go with a, uh, the three to one rule. So if you're one foot away from the source, like if you're one foot away from the guitar, generally the, the two microphones want to be three feet away from each other. That's one thing that people do. Another thing is they'll flip the phase on uh, like their, their preamps and stuff like that. But if you're the mix engineer or if you don't work with live sound a lot uh, or live instruments a lot and you do stuff with more electronic sounds, more sampled drums and this and that, you can still run in the phase cancellation. And that's what I want to go over today is just a couple things of what you can do to look out for it and how you can avoid it and a couple little tools and techniques that you can do to clean that up just in case you run into that. Okay, let's dive in. All right, so I have Pro Tools opened up here. And as I always say, these tips and tricks will work in any any DAW, so feel free to open up your DAW of choice and do this along with me. You'll find that you learn a lot more if you're doing this along with me versus trying to remember it for later. And if you are using different DAWs in the middle of this, I'm actually going to flip to Ableton, Logic, and Reason and show you how to do some phase situations in there as well. So basically what phase cancellation is, cancel things out if things are out of phase. So you want to make sure stuff is in phase. And in the beginning of this video, I talked about what you can do in the recording process, but sometimes you'll be dealing with samples and you want to make sure that they're out of phase. So let me show you drastically what things sound like when they're out of phase. Here is what this song sounds like when it's in phase. This is just some samples I put together from Sound Oracle's Spacewalk loop pack and Sound Oracle and Triz's Ben Trap and 2 drum pack. So let's check this out. You hear everything's in phase right now. We're also not dealing with a lot of layers right there. So that's why we're not hearing things that are too much out of phase. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this melody, this loop right here. And I'm going to show you what this sounds like when we are perfectly 100% out of phase. And you can find the ability to flip things in and out of phase by pulling up just about any EQ, you'll find there will be a zero with a slash in it, and that will let you flip the phase. And you'll see that in most EQs on the Fab Filter one, you just come down to where your output is and you flip the phase there. You'll see a lot of waves ones will have a button for you to flip right here. So yeah, you'll just be able to find those most places. A lot of times you'll see them in the stock plugins. Unfortunately, as far as other DAWs are concerned, their stock plugins with the phase, I think you have to use a utility plugin for that. And I'll show you how to do that later. If there is a way to do it on the stock EQs in those DAWs, just feel free to shoot a comment below and then I can remember that for future videos. So I'll show you what this sounds like when it is perfectly 100% out of phase. Your ears are not tricking you. It's supposed to be silent because it is canceling it out right now. That's what phase cancellation is. The polarity is flipped by 180 degrees. So if I flip it back out, right? Now, the tricky thing about when you have phase issues is if things are pan left and right, you're still going to hear them. It's only when they're coming right down the middle like this or when things get flipped to mono. But the problem is, is it's gonna sound a lot thinner. So let's check this out. Right? So it's a lot thinner. And the, the issue is too, is when you're hearing it in stereo, it's like, oh cool, this sounds great, or this sounds wide. Cause that's something to consider too, is when you're making things wider, when you're using stereo plugins, such as MicroShift, 
or Waves Doubler or S1 or any number of stereo plugins, a lot of times what you're doing is you're shifting the phase and that's how they make things seem wider. What you want to consider though is when we collapse to mono, are we losing anything? And I'll show you with this plugin, Panipulator. It's a free plugin by Boz Digital Labs. Google search that. You can find that if you need this, if you don't have the mono button on your interface. So I'll flip this to mono and you'll see that we're going to lose it completely. Right? So that's what you got to consider. And you're probably wondering, like, well, who listens to mono? Well, people that are listening through older iPhone speakers, older Android speakers, a lot of Bluetooth speakers will be mono as well. So you want to make sure that they're not losing it. This is a very drastic version of phase being canceled. You won't always find that issue. But so I'm going to show you a couple of things that we can do to correct that. And what I'm gonna show you though, is I'm gonna show you on this kick drum. And the reason why I'm gonna show you on the kick drum is because I can show you better with the transients and the waveforms here. They'll look a, a little bit better. So when it's not flipped out of phase, it's this is duplicated, so of course it's not flipped out of phase. We have everything, the waves here, this is going up and this is going up. This is going down, and this is going down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you when we flip the phase on this, it's going to be a whole different story, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the phase, and then I'm going to commit this, right? And now you can see when this wave is going up, this wave is going down. When this wave is going down, this is going up. This is perfectly out of phase, and it's going to cancel each other out. And you can see why it's going to cancel each other out, because there's all these openings right here, right? There's nothing going on here, and it's just, just all hollow. So we get silence. See, we're not even hearing that kick drum, unless we were to do this. And now we get this very thin sounding kick drum. When we flip the phase here, you'll see that it's going to come back. Something to consider is that it's usually not going to be perfectly out of phase like this. It's usually going to be just a little bit out of phase. It's going to be out of phase like this. When you're like layering things or you're recording different things. But the issue with that is we're still having things going up and things going down when they should both be going up and both be going down at the same time. The biggest issue with this is it's a little bit harder to catch because if something goes completely silent, your ears are going to instantly know something's up. The problem with this is sometimes if your ears aren't properly trained, you're not going to catch it right away and it's going to sound a lot thinner. Now, in most cases, you're not just going to duplicate this kick drum and flip out of flip it out of phase, but what you will have if you're layering things, like if this is a, a different sounding kick drum than this, then you might layer them and they might not be in phase with each other and they're going to be more of a situation where they're slightly out of phase. Right, so you can still hear it, but it's very thin versus if we bring it, if we flip it, now, the problem with when you flip it in your EQ or your utility, it's only flipping it by 180 degrees. So it's just doing an exact opposite of it. So you hear that still kind of sounds phasey. So what I recommend is if you can spend the 80 to $150 on a more advanced plugin that allows you to flip the phase by more or less than 180 degrees. Now, the one that I use by Sound Radex, it's called Auto Align, and it's about $150, but Waves also makes one. It's usually $180, but it goes on sale a few times a year for like $30 or $40. So, and that one's called In Phase. But all you do, it's really simple, is you just put it on both channels, and then you want to send the information from your main channel and then receive it from the other channel. And then we want to detect delay between the two and polarity. 
because we want to be able to flip that polarity. And then we just hit detect. And I usually just kind of put it on a loop and then play it until we figure out how many degrees that it's out of. And this is not going to be out of phase by 180 degrees. This is going to be more or less. So you see right there that that was not out of phase 180 degrees. It was out of phase by 50. So when we listen to it, I'm going to take it out and put it back in. All right, so you can hear that that gets a lot thicker and, and fuller sounding. And I'm going to show you the difference of when it's out of phase by 50 degrees versus 80 degrees. So here's if it's out of phase by 180 degrees right versus see that sounds much more natural and how it should sound so that's what you want to consider for when things when you're layering another thing too to consider is when you're using stereo tools such as micro shift or waves doubler or waves s1 you're going to see that what it's doing is it's flipping things out of phase so i'm going to go pretty drastic right now and put something that's going to make this wider, but also really make things phasey between the left and the right, because that's what these stereo tools are usually doing is they're shifting the left and right different because when things are out of phase and they're panned left, right, they're going to sound like they're wider. It's going to trick the mind into thinking it's wider. So when I go to mono, we lose quite a bit versus when I take it out. See how when I take it out and we're in mono, things come back to life? Versus it thins it out. Now when we're not in mono, it just makes it appear wider. So that's something that you want to consider. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip to different DAWs and quickly show you how to do it in those different DAWs. And then after that, I'm going to show you just in case you're doing some live drums, you might not always be using drum samples, just in case you're doing some live drums, a couple things to consider making sure that things are in phase for that. So if you're using Ableton and you don't have any third-party plugins and all you got is the stock plugins and you need to flip the phase, you're not going to find that on the EQ. You're going to find that on Utility. So just go to your Audio Effects, go to Utility, and then you're just going to flip the phase. It's going to be right down here. You're going to see P, H, Z, left and right. Just engage those, and then your phase will be flipped in Ableton. And if you have Logic and you're not using any third-party plugins in there and you need to flip the phase, just go to Utility. You'll find that under Gain. Select that, and then you can flip the phase here with L and R right there with the zero with the slash through it. If you're a Reason user and you need to flip the phase and you're not using any third-party plugins in there, you just want to hit Mix on your track here and then you're just going to want to scroll all the way up and then you'll find INV which will invert the phase on or off. So we're back in Pro Tools and I have a little drum session here that I recorded for somebody. When you're ever you're dealing with something like drums, you're going to have a lot of mics on one source. And when you have that many mics on one source, you have to consider that you're going to run into some phase cancellation possibly. If you see, look at how many mics I have on this. I have kick in, I have kick out, snare top, snare bottom, hi-hat. I have two rack toms, a floor tom, and I have overhead left and right. So I got a lot of mics going in on this source right here and so you run into that issue of phase cancellation because things are being recorded at the same time but then the the waveforms are reaching the mics at different times which can create that slight little delay in the waveforms when they're being recorded and then you run into the phase issues so the biggest thing that people will normally focus on when they're recording drums is the relationship between their kick in kick out and their snare top snare bottom and if you're doing live instruments i'm sure that's something that you already know i'll just show you that 
This is, again, the most popular one. A lot of times what people will do is they'll try to make sure they get good mic placement. That's something that I did. So there's not too much phase cancellation going on that on this track. There's just some things that could be touched up a little bit, which is why I chose this one because I knew this particular one wasn't absolutely perfect. And a lot of times, and something that I do too, is I'll try to flip the phase when I'm in the studio. Preamps are usually, if not always, going to have this ability to flip the phase right there, right on the preamp so you can just flip that so then right when you're recording you can do that versus have to do it later in the mix so i'll show you this when it's in and out of phase So you see it just thickens up a little bit there when it's in phase here. That's not what I wanted to focus on though with this because that's a technique that most people know. It's the overheads, the relationship between the overheads and the snare top. A lot of people don't consider that those should be in phase with your snare top. And so I'll show you the overheads by itself and you'll hear that we have a lot of really important fundamental frequencies from the snare that we want in the mix. See that attack, that brightness, that energy? We want that in the mix because if we just have the snare top, it's a little more dull, a little more hollow. So we want to make sure that that's in there. And so what we do is together they sound more like this. So we get the attack plus the body in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how it is when it's not in phase. See, it's a little bit more thin versus when it's in phase. See how when I go in and out, when it's in phase, it thickens up a little bit. And that's, again, just something that you want to take into consideration to make sure that you're getting the full effect out of it. So when you're listening to the drums... Versus when it's not in phase. Right. So you can hear that I'm going in and out and when I'm in phase with it, it thickens up a lot better. So hopefully these techniques help you a lot. Hopefully this allows you to make sure that your music and your songs and your layers and your recordings are in phase with each other so you're not losing any important frequencies and your mixes can sound big and full and rich whether it's on stereo or mono systems. So I'm hoping that you got a lot out of this tutorial today. Hopefully there was some information that was useful. If you're getting a lot out of this but you want to see more, please feel free to comment below. Let us know what kind of tutorials that you want to see in the future and Oracle and I can definitely make that happen. We're always trying to find the content that you want to see. If you're liking what you're hearing from me, you can find me everywhere on social media at Realistic Productions. You can find me at the web, realisticproductions.net. You can find my man Sound Oracle everywhere at Sound Oracle. And if you're looking for the best 808s, the best kicks, the best snares with the craziest loops and samples you can find on the internet right now, go to soundoracle.net. All right, till next time.